Hello, hello, hello. And I am so delighted, excited, ecstatic to be here today for another Rent to Rent Rockstars interview. And we have the amazing, the delightful, the amazing on live video, Lois Wilson from My Cozy Homes. Now, Lois has been a total inspiration to me since she joined us in the Rent to Rent Kickstarter because Lois is such, she's amazing company. She's so funny. Her branding is on point. And now that she started, she's on fire. And I know that you are going to love her story. So welcome to Rent to Rent Rockstars, Lois. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for having uh, me. It's, 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 it's our pleasure, Lois. So let's start at the beginning. Tell us what your situation was before you started up with the Kickstarter. Right, my situation was that I was, well, initially my background is that I'm an accountant mm -hmm. and I'd done that for many, many, many years until I just felt like, let's move on to something else. There's gotta be more than this in terms of passion, career. And I've always wanted to run my own business. So at that point, I was then headhunted to run a local charity, mm -hmm. which initially it was for six months to um, do a small project of running a food bank in um, my borough. Mm -hmm. So I was headhunted for that. And sort of like five years down the line, it grew into a, a really, really big food bank, one of the biggest in the borough that I still manage today. But alongside that, I thought, why not start the company that I've always wanted to start Mm -hmm. I've had the passion for 20 years to have my own business in property. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, why not make a start? Why not try to build a company? So I researched all the strategies, looked at what would suit, you know, me and my family, because I want to have a family business. And, you know, working with HMO seemed the perfect way to go. So I started my company, property management company of My Cozy Homes. I can I ask you what attracted you to think, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try out the Rent to Rent Kickstarter? Well, I've been following your online groups for the longest time. I mean, I, I've seen you for a few years around and mm -hmm. um, before we met properly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I saw that you had HMO Heroes, HMO Heaven. I just like the style, the brand. I like the fact that I could relate to both you and uh, Nikki. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like this would be the right step for me to take because it was hands on holding your hand to get your deal. And... It, especially where I live in London, it was almost deemed impossible mm. to really get deals in London. So mm. I just felt like this would be the perfect thing for me to do and try. Mm. And, and why not join your online group? Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. Can you tell me what you were worried about before you started the course? Because sometimes when you're going to put in some investment and you're just not sure if it's going to work out, were you worried about anything before you joined? I was worried about everything. <laughs> I was worried about everything. It's either saying what I wasn't worried about. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, I was just concerned that, you know, I was legal and compliant in every way. I was concerned that, you know, people might not take me seriously. As a young company, I was concerned about referencing. I was concerned, you know, would I let my landlords down? Would I let myself down, my family down? There were just so many concerns, and that's why when you find somebody that will hold your hand through every stage that takes away all the fears and the concerns i want to ask is because it's an online coaching course and some people have never been on an online course and i don't know if you had you been on an online course before never never and did you know, know what to expect and was it what you expected i had no idea what to expect but I think because I trusted you and Nikki, mm. then I couldn't be far wrong. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think you've got to trust your coaches. If mm. you don't trust your coach, then you're not going to be sure if you're really doing the right thing. And I, mm. I felt I was in the right hands. And I, I absolutely love the group because you've all got that same get up and go, let's, let's try this and dive in, you know, yeah. with both feet. Mm. Um, I was going to say, what was it like setting up your business? But that side of it for you, you had already done. Yeah, I mean, I set up my business quite early in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, I was chugging along doing, you know, setting it all up. And I think when you're not quite sure which process should follow which process, 
you kind of do a scatter, scatter gun approach. Mm-hmm. So you set up your company, should I set up a sole trader? Should I set up a limit club? So all these little stages you go through, not sure what to do. You're absorbing so much information from the internet and wherever you can. So it's about making the right decisions. So we set up a little while ago, but then I got stuck. Mm. I kind of got stuck because I think when you've got too much information, you don't know what's the right information, you get mm. stuck. Mm. I got stuck on pictures, I got stuck on branding, I got stuck on, you know, if I could just do the right thing, then the deals would just fall in my lap. And actually it doesn't work like that. You've got to do the whole shebang. You've got to do stage by stage by stage and drive it. Mm. And I think I'd lost my, my drive halfway through. Well, I think it's so easy to lose your drive when you haven't got people around you who are already doing it or who are already doing it, but also are showing you what they're doing. So yeah. it's, you know, you can be in a group with other people who are doing it, but if they're keeping everything to themselves, then you don't know if you, what you're doing is the right thing. Yeah. So it's, it's a good thing that, that you mentioned that. So next thing that I know that a lot of people get nervous about is the landlord's part of it. So let's start off with the landlord letters. Mm-hmm. Now you, you took this next level Lois, didn't you? Because <laughs> we've got some letter templates Lois and next leveled it off the charts. So tell us about that. Do you know what? I've just got this thing about gold. I love gold, the color gold. So I just thought I'm going to put some gold in my letters and sort of gold edging. And that's what I did. I kind of put a gold fancy edging all around the letters and some of my writing was gold in the middle of it. And, and I thought, well, you know what? Let's do this thing golden. Let's be golden. Yeah. And that's what I did. And it kind of, it was an attraction really. So it worked. Yeah. It, they looked amazing because sometimes gold can be OTT, but yours just looked, they were just on points. And I think I got four or five calls within the first, within the first few days of that letter going out. Because I also posted one to myself just to be sure. Yes. That going out. And it did come to me. So I knew they were going out. I knew they were hitting doormats. But, you know, on the second round, I persevered and I got calls. Calls were just coming through the door. Um, sort of through, through the phone, yeah. <laughs> through the phone, yeah, I love it. <laughs> now, this is another place that I know people get worried. We've got a checklist of questions to, to say to the landlords to help you with that conversation. But how did you feel when your phone started ringing? I just looked at it. <laughs> I thought the phone's ringing. I don't recognize the number because I've got a different um, phone for my business. So I'm used to my mobile ringing and and I recognize my numbers. But when the business phone started ringing, I just looked at it and I thought, well, Lois, answer the phone. (laughs) (laughs) But I answered it and I I thought, I wanted to sound like a professional, my cozy homes. And I bumbled it. I don't know what I said, but I got through it. But it it, it is nerve wracking. But what you've got to remember is that there's something that the landlord wants from you. There's something that you said in your letter that's attracted that landlord. So mm-hmm. there's no need to be nervous. He would just like to find out who you are. Mm-hmm. So it's just a conversation. Just think of them as human beings and it's just a conversation. What human beings? Lois, family, we forget that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's just another person on the phone. So since you've been, or since we were together, it was, well, we just worked out today. It was four months. Yeah. So tell us what happened with the landlord that you're now working with. How did it all go? Where, where did you meet this person, etc.? Well, this particular landlord, again, it was it's solely through my letters. They rang me and we had a bit of a chat. And it felt like I was talking to a friend mm. within 10 minutes. Mm. And before I knew it, we were on the phone for nearly an hour and a half. And I'm thinking, yeah. I've got to be comfortable with this person. But I think when you when your conversation flows... There's a natural rapport with you and the landlord. They mm. ask all about us. They ask about our family. And yeah. because we're a family-run business, I think that really appealed to them. Yeah. And whatever it is that attracts that landlord to you, that's yeah. what, you know, is going to build the relationship on. So we talked for ages. We talked about anything and everything. And so I actually forgot I was talking to a prospective landlord. <laughs> that's how comfortable the relationship was in that short space of time. So, um, you know, it, every potential landlord you know, speak to them on a professional level, but also be relaxed with them and be true to who you are and what your company represents. And then that landlord will decide probably by that conversation if they want to work with you or not. Yeah. And and the thing I love about it is because you, 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 you got so relaxed, you forgot you were speaking to a landlord. Whereas when you started speaking to the landlords at first, which was only like a couple months earlier, um, you 
didn't feel so relaxed at all. So sometimes those landlords that didn't work out for whatever reason are a practice run, you know, for the ones that do. Because yeah. I remember one of the things that you said was that you really started to believe in yourself more as you were going through the process and beginning to talk more to family and friends about what you were doing. And, and I think all of that, all of that really helps in those conversations and like feeling, <clears throat> sorry, feeling relaxed. So tell us about the two properties because it's two, two deals. So it's four months and uh, two deals. So tell us about your properties. Well, the thing is, I mean, it's always been pretty close to the deal, but to hit two in one hit, yeah. Um, it's like double for your trouble, really. Yeah. But these two, they're um, in London, which is amazing because there's such a, a thing. There's a bit of a flavour going around that London is very difficult mm -hmm. um, to get HMOs, licensed HMOs. Mm -hmm. And but they are they are there. But mm -hmm. you've just got to keep at it. They are there. Mm -hmm. So when I came across these two, viewed them both, mm -hmm. and they're both five bedroom HMOs, licensed HMOs. In South East London and already practically tenanted so yeah. it was up and running already. I, I really like this because you hadn't got to do a big refurb, you hadn't got to uh, find all the tenants so you've only had to find two tenants, was it one for each property I think? Yep just one room was, was empty for each and they literally had given notice that particular week so it was just a case of working with each room in each property. Yeah, so you have two rooms and you did a beautiful job because you put pictures up. I just thought they were beautiful, Lois. Do you want to tell us what your strategy is for dressing the room? I'm trying to keep in theme with the, the colour of the brand, which is sort of all centred around gold and mustard. So that's how I dress my rooms, very much cosy to what our name brand is. But so mm. my cosy homes, I just imagine, I imagine that a, a home, a room has got to be cosy. Mm -hmm. It's got to be somewhere inviting, somewhere you want to come in and just kick off at the end of the day mm -hmm. and just relax. So mm -hmm. we go with that theme of being very cosy. Standard, standard furniture in the bedroom, they're all furnished, but we just mm -hmm. tend to decorate it, refurbish it with cosy colours, mm -hmm. um, bright colour bedding, and just somewhere that you'd want to come to at the end of a long day. My, my heart melts when I, when I just listen to you talking about it, because it, it says something else really, which is, it's not just about the logo and the branding, because what you've done there is you've created the brand values that, you know, that My Cozy Home stands for family, it stands for homeliness, and all of those, though, that comes out through everything you say then about your brand. And that yeah. is one of the things that we do go through as part of the step by, you had already put that in place for yourself, but we do go through with, uh, you create your name, but you also decide what's your brand values and what's the offer of your business and yeah. sometimes I think people think oh why are we doing this but that's why it really helps because then when you're talking to people just when you're thinking about your business you you can get that full you know this is what we're a family business we're about a homely we're about coziness you know it's it it's it's fantastic yeah so Lois as I said, it's been it's been great having you as part of it. Just because you and your uh, chicken and all, all your laughs, we've we've really had a hoot <laughs> with you in the group. And can you tell us a little bit about what it's been like uh, being being in the being in the group? I love the group. I mean, you feel like you're sort of like the mum or the big sister in the group and it's a group that's interactive we're like family i like to bring family wherever i go and i like to be involved in somewhere that feels like family mm -hmm. and that is very much for the group it's lots of families in there and people actually sort of belong to each other like family because mm -hmm. you get to know each other you're going through the journey together mm -hmm. any questions you want to ask you ask feel free we have um online sort of group chats where anything you're unsure about you can ask because you've got people that have walked the same journey they've had the fears they've had the failures mm. they've got up dusted themselves off and they've kept going mm. and sometimes you just need a bit of a motivation or a bit of encouragement and support to just keep moving and you will get there and that's what you get in the group so mm. i would say to anyone if you're unsure just get involved mm. log onto the group see what we're all about and be part of the family. Oh my gosh, you know what, whenever I'm speaking to you, I just feel you would be such an amazing coach. 
because <laughs> I feel uplifted listening to you. And, and one of the things that I love that you said is that people have already been there before with the same fears and the same failures and they've got up and they've carried on because yeah. often people could be sitting and looking at this and saying, okay, well, it's okay for Lois because whatever reason they put into their mind, but actually what they don't realize is that, you know, you had fears of failures and missteps along the way. And other people might look at me and say, well, it's okay for Stephanie because, you know, she's been doing this for donkeys. But again, at the very beginning, you know, I was just looking back on failures. I wasn't looking back on successes. And, and so you've just got to get up there and, and take, you know, those steps and, and, you know, feel the fear as they say, and do it anyway and mm -hmm. take the steps forward. Because uh, as, as I, I heard on the podcast this morning, what was it? What's the worst that can happen? You could end up, you know, with a property to rent and, a, you know, a lovely company and a property to rent and something that you can do with your family. Like, because tell us about that, because you work with your two daughters, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's always been a dream to have a family business. And OK, mum sort of started it off. But my daughter, my youngest daughter, has just come on board. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be officially announcing her pretty soon. So watch this space. Yeah. And then my other daughter, who's our media, you know, media yeah. guru, she's um, coming on board eventually as well. And it will be a family, a family affair. So even my nieces now want to get involved and say, you know, to, to grow it because we are expanding yeah. and it's, it's a family affair. It's totally yeah. Family. Well, I know that I know Lois from knowing you and speaking to you today that My Cozy Homes is going to be a great success because who doesn't want that, a cozy home? <laughs> I think it's, it's fantastic for landlords but, and also for the tenants who, who will come and live with you. Yeah. Um, as we're now wrapping up, is there anything that you would like to leave people with if they are thinking of doing what, what you've done? Do you know what? I would say no matter where you're at, what age you are, because I started late, later age, I'm not too old, but later age, <laughs> you know, whatever age you are, whatever stage of life you are, just make that start. And even if that making that start means just doing one thing a day to work towards better in your business or yourself, it can start with, you know, self-improvement. It can start with self-motivation. Whatever it takes to start, make that start, because you never can regret starting but you'll always regret if you didn't try yes. so i would say always try and even if you don't know where to start get around like-minded people yeah. and that's the thing where i think mm -hmm. so just make that start you know get involved with the group get around like-minded people educate yourself mm -hmm. and just take that move to the next stage you won't regret it 